Whistle Trouble, written by Christopher Audrey and adapted for audio by Ryan and Fox. Hello everyone, it's Ivo Hughes here. I've just been asked to talk to you all about a recent incident with Sir Randall. You see, he's been moaning a lot this week about the amount of passengers we're carrying on the railway and how he wanted a rest. <laughs> well, he went out of his way to get it, but I don't think it went quite the way he wanted it to. I reckon in the future he'll just wait for two weeks rather than run the risk of humiliating himself again. It was the height of summer. The coaches on the Scar Lorry Railway were packed with visitors, flocking to see the mountains, rivers and lakes. Usually, it was a time of year the engines enjoyed, but one engine in particular moaned bitterly about it. What on earth is wrong with you, Sir Randall? Same thing that's always wrong with him during the summer season. He feels overworked. I am overworked. It's always the same at this time of year. They think we've got nothing better to do than ferry them from place to place. And the worst of it is I'm first out today too. Yeah, but the fact is, we don't. Scar Lowe said rightly before, passengers are our cold and winter. Do you recall what happened at the Royal Railway when we had none? We closed down. Pete, your son's right, Sir Randall. They're lucky to be here if you ask me. I didn't ask you though, did I? You're young and impressionable, Ivo Hugh, but you'll learn one day. Has he always been like that? Grandpa will tell you the same. He's always been a stubborn know-it-all. Don't worry. One day I'm sure he'll learn. Sir Handel climbed ruefully down to the station to collect his coaches. The platform was swarming with passengers and it made Sir Handel see them. Oh, we're going to have a full train. What a joy. Oh, cheer up. Been like this all week. No wonder. I'm exhausted. I'm looking forward to my week out of service. It's been like ages since I've had a rest. And it'll be a while longer still. You're not rostered to be rested for another two weeks at least. Duncan and Renee's have still to be given theirs. That's not fair. It's too long. Sorry, Sir Handel. But Mr. Hugh and the Thin Control make the rules, not me. The guard blew his whistle and Sir Handel hoofed out of the station fuming at the prospect of two weeks more work before a proper rest. But as he moved out, he noticed something which gave him a faint glimmer of hope. There's a boat loose at the top of my cab. If I rock and roll as much as I can, I'll shake the cab even looser. Then I shall have to have a rest while it's mended. Sir Handel gave a concerted effort as he pounded up the valley. He shook and swayed as much as he could and took full advantage of bumpy rails. Steady, boy, steady! Uh, why wait two weeks? I'll be out of service in no time at this rate. When they arrived at the station by the lake, the passengers and the station master came to see what the matter had been. Passengers are complaining of an awfully bumpy ride, driver. Was there something wrong? I can't quite explain it myself. It may have been the extra weight causing a bit of strain. But I can't rightly be sure. Let's check when you get back to the yard this evening. You don't have that kind of thing going on. It might break a spring and there'd be trouble. Yes, and a nice long rest in the shed. <laughs> and so, for the rest of the day, Sir Handel continued on in the same way. He shook and rattled up and down the line until he was brought back to the shed late that evening, where his crew checked him over.
Well, there's certainly nothing wrong with his springs by all accounts. I can't quite think what's caused all the trouble. I mentioned that bad bit of track to Mr. Hill, but I think it'd be wise to keep a more watchful eye upon Sir Handel tomorrow. Sir Handel grinned as he watched them leave, but Scarloe suspected something and shot Sir Handel a grim look. You're up to something, aren't you? Are you accusing me of something, Scarloe? I saw you when I stopped in the loop. You were awfully shaky on the way down the line. Well, driver and fireman can't explain it. What more can I do? You wouldn't be trying to damage yourself to get time off, would you, Sir Handel? Oh, don't talk rot, Peter Sam. Of course I wouldn't. What respectable engine would do something like that? An engine who moans about a lack of time off, that's who. You do well to be more careful, Sir Handel. You should know better. Sir Handel said nothing and subsided into silence for the rest of the evening. The following morning, he left the shed again with a heated temper. Today it's coming loose altogether. Yes, no more silly tourists for me. Now you'd better be careful and behave yourself today. We can't have you rocking and rolling like you did yesterday. The passengers didn't like it at all, and some of them complained to the thin controller. You don't want them to think we're a bad railway, do you? Of course I don't. I can't help it if I've developed a tendency to shake a little. A little? I could barely hold my shovel still with all the swaying you were doing. And isn't it rather queer how it's only ever developed overnight? You've pulled something like this before with the fire bars, and I remember it well. I'll find out what you're up to, Sir Handel, and I've put a stop to it. Ah, uh-huh. but by the time you figure it out, it'll be too late. As the day wore on, Sir Handel gradually bumped and bounced more and more, seizing every chance he got to dislodge the boat. At the middle station, there was a tremendous bump. Oh! You silly engine! You could have derailed us there! Nearly there! Nearly there! We can't risk him going on like this. The thin controller will go mad! Slow him down and check his speed. The slower he goes, the less chance there is of any damage. But Sir Handel knew exactly what he was doing. He had sought out all the bad bits the day before and intended to use them to his advantage. He knew a set of points a few yards ahead would do the trick. Here we go. This is the spot. Oh dear, Nora. Stop! Quick! Something's come loose! I don't believe it! This is probably what he's been waiting for! The driver stopped the train and examined the damage. As was his wont, Sir Handel had broken the cab bolt and he was delighted. Oh dear, whatever's happened? You know fine well what's happened, you silly engine. You've broken your cab bolt. Oh my. What shall we do now then? Scarlow and Peter Sam are up the line already. And I know for a fact that there won't be nearly enough time to get one of the others ready. You're going to have to take the train to the top station. And it'll serve you right for being so rude. But what about my cab? You should have thought of that when you shook it loose. They raised some more steam and then set off again on the line. They had to hurry to make up for lost time. And as they did, something unusual began to happen. We're going to be late. More than likely Sir Handel has shaken himself to bits. Maybe that's been his grand plan all along. What's that noise? Sounds like an engine trying the whistle, but I can't quite manage it. It was Sir Handel's whistle. The chain which worked his whistle kept catching every time Sir Handel's cab rattled, giving out a faint peep each time. <laughs> Sir Handel, what a noise! It's not funny, it's completely undignified. Needless to say, I doubt to be trying this again, Sir Handel. If it means suffering like I have today, then no. Sir Handel fumed with rage, and for the rest of the journey, did his best to try and keep from shaking at all. It didn't quite work, and he kept whistling with every jerk. People gathered at bridges, stiles and fences when they heard him pass by. Never seen so many people waving to us. <laughs> We've never whistled this much before, have we? Oh, very funny. 
They'll think I'm as chirpy and cheerful as Peter Sam with all this whistling I'm doing. I can only hope George doesn't pass by. Hey, Sir Randall, your whistle works now, try your safety valve. Hey, Ivo Hugh, shut up! Sir Handel was very glad to get home to the shed that evening and have his cupboard mended, but was slightly less enthused to see the Fink Controller there waiting for him. I've heard all about your antics, Sir Handel. Come to think of it, I think most of the valley and beyond urge you coming down the line. I am sorry, sir. It won't happen again. After what's happened to you today, I'm not surprised. It's back to work as usual tomorrow, Sir Handel. The cab is back intact and the boat is secured again, so there'll be no more silly whistling. I should certainly hope there isn't. And I hope you'll think twice about bouncing about like that again. I expect you to know better, Sir Handel. Oh, don't worry, sir. Sir Handel's all in the old matter, but he'll learn one day. Sir Handel just rolled his eyes and scowled. But needless to say, he knew better than to try something so stupid again in future.